Welcome to the um, lecture series, Introduction to Modern Brain Computer Interface Design. I am Christian Kotha from the Swartz Center for Computation and Neuroscience from UCSD. And um, I give you a little bit of, over, of an overview of what this lecture entails. So, but first I start a little bit with a um, background on who we are. So we are most known as the makers of certain open source toolboxes, most of them for MATLAB. That starts with uh, EEG Lab, which is an offline EEG analysis toolbox, which is the most used open source uh, toolbox for EEG worldwide. Um, here's one of the GUIs. You might have already heard of that in your lab. Uh, and here we have BCI Lab, which is specifically for brain computer interface design, which is our topic for this lecture. And we'll work with that toolbox, among others. And then we have a few others, a toolbox for mobile brain body imaging, and one for source information flow between sources in the brain. And more recently, we've started to also um, make real-time experimentation tools. Of, and the most important one is a lab streaming layer. And then we have something for seamless presentation as well. And these things are not specific to brain-computer interfacing at all. They are um, primarily just to be able to do real-time um, data acquisition and uh, synchronization and so on. And I'll talk a, f a few, uh, I'll say a few things about these as well. Um, but let me start with um, the prerequisites for this course. So I'm expecting you to know something about linear algebra. Um, 101, basically, so you need to know matrices and have a good understanding of high dimensional spaces, although you might acquire this over the course of this course. Um, you should also know the fundamentals of programming. So you should know how a program works really internally, what it does, memory, and all these kinds of things, how it would pro process data, perhaps online, and so on. So th these are really key to understanding how a BCI actually works at the end of the day. And um, f for some of the exercises, you should definitely have some prior exposure to MATLAB, and importantly, some coding experience. Uh, that's easy to acquire. There's also free um, alternatives like Octave and so on that you can work with. And although you can get through most of the lecture just using the graphical user interface of our toolbox, um, I highly encourage you to actually um, gain some coding skills. So th that's basically all. Um, and I'll give you an overview. So the, the course starts um, with a part on um, the basic principles of BCI design. So uh, BCI, Brain Computer Interface. So uh, it starts with sensors and definitions and things like that, and ends at a point where you know and understand how to code up a brain computer interface that actually works properly. And that is, in fact, in some sense, state of the art. Although we will deal with simple EEG phenomena in that part. In the next part, um, steps up the game in a sense, and we'll dive into the BCI Lab toolbox, which is our toolkit for really advanced um, prototyping of methods, open source. And part of that is to learn how to replicate that kind of hands-on <laughs> experience from part one, and how to go really far beyond that, and uh, perhaps you know create your own flavors of methods and things like, th um, like that. And the third part and last part is um, switching over to more complex brain processes that are fundamentally harder to deal with because the phenomena are more complicated and so on, perhaps composed of multiple parts uh, happening at the same time. And we'll uh, go all the way there as well to the point where you know how to tackle those uh, and, and actually build a working BCI and how it really works. And I'll zoom in a little bit. So the first part has um, an intro lecture just on the basics of BCI, followed by a demo on um, our data acquisition system, lab streaming layer. You can Google this up if you like, um, which, which you need to know uh, both in order to hack around just from scratch with a couple of devices, um, and also for BCI lab specifically. And then comes a sequence of theory lectures. Um, we start with basics of electroencephalography or EEG, which is our main way to get access to brain signals cheaply. 
And we continue with how to process these signals, which is the theory of signal processing. And we go on and talk about adaptivity, which is really central to BCI design because you need to adapt to the specific characteristics of the individual in order to squeeze out the last bit of performance from your BCI. Um, uh, it's really a central element, and that takes us into the field of machine learning, which is the subfield of computer science, um, talking about specifically that. And we end with a, um, a lecture on a particular kind of EEG phenomenon called event-related potentials. And um, that is the one that, that we'll then analyze in some, um, in some exercise. I, I walk you through that exercise, where you learn how to deal with this kind of phenomenon, which is sort of covering 50% of all major brain phenomena that you can pick up and work with through EEG. The second part is rather short. Uh, we have a lecture on the concepts and details of the BCI Lab Toolbox, how it works, and so on. We go on with a walkthrough through the GUI. I'll show you all the details and dialogues and things. And we have an exercise um, that specifically um, encourages you to um, <laughs> replicate that and go beyond uh, what I showed you in the GUI and create your own um, methodologies. The last part is more theoretical in nature and also more advanced, necessarily. But it's building on top of what you already learned before. So we start with a theoretical lecture on oscillatory processes. So that's a very big category of, of brain processes uh, that shows up in many, many places, especially if, if it's sort of steady state activity that changes slowly in the brain. Um, and there's an exercise attached to that which, in which you implement um, yourself a particular method called common spatial patterns, or CSP, which is pretty much optimal for these kinds of processes under certain conditions. And after that, we go on with theory. We'll talk about optimization theory and uh, BCI approaches that utilize that theory. And that is a very, very flexible uh, theoretical framework known from engineering that allows you to build optimal, in some sense, uh, approaches for also under all sorts of conditions and so on. And so that gives us the flexibility that we need um, to deal with these complex processes. And that is followed by a scripting lecture, which explains how to script in MATLAB um, methods and analysis with BCI Lab and how to make you know, plugins for this toolbox, which, which you want to do in order to create customized methods and approaches and things like that. Although, of course, you can reuse a lot of stuff that already exists. And there's an exercise for that, which allows you to script online analysis and uh, another exercise which encourages you to script offline analysis in BCI Lab. Uh, offline is, although it sounds less exciting, is what you need to demonstrate conclusively that your system actually works properly. And it's ultimately what goes into the papers and so on. Right? So um, the last uh, lecture is then on an outlook uh, of where the field is moving some of the things that we are doing at the Swartz Center and other people. And we are specifically talking about neuroscience aspects to the whole thing, um, be going beyond just a mere engineering approach and putting the biology back in, in a sense, um, which is something that we are pushing at the Swartz Center um, specifically. And, and that is how the course pretty much ends.